come and receive the evening offering a tithe. If you have to give tonight, give as unto the Lord. How many knows we can't outgive the Lord? Amen. 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 He's faithful. Even when we're not faithful. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight, God, for the privilege, Lord, and the opportunity, Lord, just to come into this house and to be able to worship and to be able to give unto you. And Father, I pray this night, God, that you would just have your way here in this service. God, help us, Lord, to decrease, Lord, that you might increase. God, fill this house with your presence, your power, and your glory. And Father, I pray for this offering tonight. God, bless those, God, that are able to give. God, I pray you just bless them mightily. And God, help us as a church to use this money, God, to further your kingdom. And Father, we pray all this tonight in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Let's worship tonight.
Amen. We're going to sing that chorus again, church. Most of you, you know, when you read the Bible, I'm currently reading in Psalms, and there are so many verses just talking about singing and shouting to the Lord and giving Him all the praise and honor and glory. Amen. And it's just, I just, I love reading because singing is one of the ways that we can worship. Amen. Amen. And David was a psalmist and sang and worshiped and praised God. Amen. And we can all do that. This, even the words in this song says, let every breath that I have, amen. amen. He's the amen. one that has empowered us amen. with the breath. He gives us life. He's worthy of praise, church. Let's sing that chorus again. Just shout to the Lord. Lift your voices tonight, church. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. Oh, I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise. I have nothing compares to the promise I have nothing compares to the promise I have in you amen amen thank you Lord there's singing going on right now in heaven church the hosts are singing singing and singing no reason why we can't sing and worship down here because he's been so good to us Amen. and I just like pastor said I didn't deserve it there's many times I could have been dead I couldn't I wouldn't be standing here today it but it wasn't for his grace and his mercy I love him tonight church I'm just disappointed that I ran with the enemy too long and gave him my life too long. Hmm. But I'm thankful one day he reached down and picked me up. Hallelujah. Out of that buck. And out of that fire. And told me to run on. And see what the end might be. Keep me in your prayers, church, because I want to make heaven my home. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. They'll be shouting. This next song is this old hymn. They'll be shouting on the hills. What a happy time is coming when we reach our home in heaven and the burdens which we form will bear no more. When the angel sounds a trumpet calling us to those bright mansions, they'll be shouting on the everlasting shore. Oh, they'll be shouting on the hills of glory. Shouting on the hills. Shouting on the hills when we reach that land through which we heard the story. They'll be shouting on the hills of God. When the saints begin to gather round the throne in that blessed city, and the angel choir, the songs of praise outpour. Harps of gold will then be ringing, saints of all the ages singing, such to me as we never saw before. Oh, they'll be shouting on the hills of glory, yes, shouting on the hills. They'll be shouting on the hills when we reach that land of which we've heard the story. They'll be shouting on the hills of God. Sing that chorus again. Oh, they'll be shouting on the hills of glory. Yes, shouting on the hills. Yes, shouting on the hills when we reach that land of which we've heard the story. They'll be shouting on the hills of God. 
On that blessed happy morning When old friends are reunited And when all our loved ones we will see again In that happy land eternal We will live with joy supernal And with Jesus and his angels ever reign Oh, there'll be shouting on the hills of glory Shouting on the hills Shouting on the hills when we reach that land of which we've heard the story. There'll be shouting on the hills of God. Oh, there'll be shouting on the hills of glory. Shouting on the hills, yes, shouting on the hills when we reach that land of which we've heard the story. There'll be shouting on the hills. When we reach that land of which we've heard that story, there'll be shouting on the hills of God. Amen, church. Shouting on the hills. Amen. Amen. This morning, Pastor was talking about decreasing so that he could increase. This song is, I Surrender All. All to Jesus I surrender all to Him I freely give I will ever love and trust his presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. Jesus, I surrender humbly at His feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken take me, Jesus, take me now. All to Jesus I Surrender me, be Savior, holy thine. Let me feel the Holy yes. Spirit truly know that thou art mine. And I surrender all, yes, I. Surrender now, I feel. 
Pastor Cub. Oh, I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. You know what? Ninety-nine and a half. He wants everything tonight. Amen. Amen. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer and we ask tonight, when you slip up your hand, you're saying, God, I surrender this to you. And when you bring your hand back down, don't you pull it back down with you. You leave it right there at his feet. So let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for the privilege and opportunity, Lord, to be able to come and to be able to pray over every need that's here in this building. God, you see the hands, God, that were raised all across this sanctuary. And Father, I pray tonight as they surrender their needs to you, Father, that you would speak a word and God, their situations and their problems may change in the name of Jesus. And I pray tonight, God, for those that might need a healing in their body. God, that you would reach down your great mighty hand and touch them in their physical body. And Father, I pray for those that are not here, that are watching. God, those that are not able to come out tonight. God, that are sick and afflicted. God, I know you have no limits. You have no boundaries. God, you can walk right into their living room. And God, you can reach down and touch them right where they're at. And Father, I pray tonight, God, as we lift up our needs to you, God, that we would have faith and we would believe, God, that you're the answer for what we ask. And God, we pray all this tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sister Terry and I, before church, we're talking about how we need Jesus every day, every day, every day. And this song is, I Need You More. I need you more, more than yesterday, I need you
tonight. I don't know about you, but I want more of Him. Yes. Amen. I'm not satisfied what I got this morning. I want some more tonight. Don't you? Amen. Don't live on yesterday when God's fresh and new today. Let's sing it one more time. Lift our hands toward Him and say, God, I need you tonight. Oh, yes. more, more than, than yesterday. Me. More than anything. Go ahead. Sorry. More than the air I breathe. More than the song I sing. More than the next heart more than anything, and more as time goes by, I'll be by your side, cause I never want to go back to my own life, I need you. Clap of praise. Thank you. Amen. You may be seated tonight. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. While you're turning there, has anybody got a testimony tonight? Yes, Brother Noel. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Anybody else? Yes. Don't want to miss nobody. All right.
Praise the Lord. Amen. God still hears and answers prayer. Colossians 3, verse 15. And if anybody else, I don't want to cut nobody off. Brother Jay. God praise. Hallelujah. Us adults won't do it. The kids will do it. <laughs> praise the Lord. Colossians 3, verse 15. If you found that, like to stand for the reading of the word, please feel free. If not, that's all right. It says, Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to thee which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Tonight I want to preach on the thought of God wants to lead your life. God wants to lead your life. Let us pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the testimonies, God, that we have heard on how you have answered prayer. God, I thank you, Lord, for your presence, God, that we've already felt and experienced here tonight. Now, Father, I stand here, God, recognizing and realizing, God, I cannot nor do I want to do this by myself. God, I need your help tonight. God, anoint me and use me and help me, God, to say what you once said here tonight to these people. And, Father, I pray, God, that you would anoint every word that I say. Let me say it under the unction of the Holy Ghost. And, God, anoint every ear to hear and every heart to receive. And, God, I pray all this tonight in the name of Jesus. Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God wants to lead your life. The Word of God tells us, Amen, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. How many knows who the Prince of Peace is? Who's the Prince of Peace? Jesus. Or we could say, let Jesus rule in our hearts. Amen. Or let the peace of God, when we have a relationship with Jesus Christ, how many knows He brings peace to our hearts? Amen. And how many knows tonight there's only one throne on our heart? I mean, yeah, there's only one seat or one throne on our heart. Amen. Either the peace of God is ruling our heart or something else. How many knows if we have doubt, we have fear, and we have unbelief, the peace of God is not ruling our hearts. Amen. If we want God to rule our lives, we must allow Him to sit down on the throne of our hearts, and we must know that the peace of God that will pass all understanding will be there when everything around us is going haywire and going the wrong direction it may seem like. Amen. We can still have a peace in our hearts and know that God is leading my life and I'm going to rest in the peace of knowing Christ is still in control. Amen. And it says to be thankful. How many knows we ought to be thankful for the peace of God? Amen. Brother Noel testified. We prayed for him a few Wednesday night ago about how God delivered him from anxiety. Amen. Those that stood and testified, Debbie testified about God healing her. How many knows when God leads our life and we're thankful? Amen. We ought to be thankful for his leading and direction in our lives. Don't be ashamed to stand and testify about the goodness of God. Amen. We sang about it this morning as a body of believers about the goodness of God. Amen. But as individuals, don't be ashamed to say that God is leading my life. Amen. And He has done this or He has done that for me. And show your thankfulness. Amen. 
God wants to lead your life. As I said this morning, God's a gentleman. He won't force himself upon anybody. It's up to us to give him control. It's up to us to allow him to sit down and rule in our hearts and in our lives. But if other things are sitting on the throne of our heart, how many knows Jesus is not ruling and he's not leading? He wants to be number one above everything else. When something rules, it, it's above everything else. He's above fear. Because remember, God didn't give us the spirit of fear, but He gave us power over that fear. He didn't give us the spirit of unbelief. Well, he, amen. We can't let other things rule in the place that let's, uh, 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 on our heart. Amen. Let's go on. He wants to lead us out of bondage. Exodus chapter 6, verse 6, it says, Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. Amen. We know that Israel was under great bond, Egyptian bondage. Amen. They lived as slaves as the Egyptians were very cruel and very hard taskmasters upon the Israelites. And we know that Egypt is a symbol of sin or a symbol of bondage. Amen. And the Word of God tells us that God spoke and He told them that He wanted to lead them out of bondage and, amen, and rid them of their bondage and their enemies. Amen. And I believe tonight if God is leading and directing our lives, that He is trying to do everything He can to lead us out of sin and to lead us out of bondage. Amen. But we have an absolute adversary, the devil, that likes to come and tries to entangle us and try to bind us up and to bring bondage back into our lives. But we must remember the Word of God says that whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Amen. When God is leading our lives, we should not be wanting to go back to Egypt's bondage. Amen. We should be walking in the freedom that God has given us. Amen. God didn't lead us, amen, into a place to allow us to be entangled again with that yoke of bondage that He delivered us from. But yet, so many times, over and over again, I see it, amen, throughout the years, amen, God brings somebody out of sin's bondage, and then the enemy comes and He entangles them again, and He pulls them right back into the same bondage that God set them free from. But we as God's children, amen, that have been brought out from under Egypt's bondage, we need to walk in the freedom that God has given us. Amen. God's not going to lead you back to bondage. Amen. And I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but I just, I, maybe somebody wasn't here this morning, but God just put this scripture back into my, my spirit again tonight. We should be walking and abstaining from evil. Amen. I use this scripture again tonight. It says in 1 Thessalonians 5. 22, abstain from all appearance of evil. If God is leading our lives, we should not be allowing evil things that come into our hearts and in our lives. Amen. It may not look evil. How many knows those they'll dress it up? But if it's something that goes against the Word of God, if it's something, amen, that is not good for us, how many knows we need to abstain from it? Get rid of it. Don't entertain it. Amen. If God is leading your life, we need to abstain from all appearance of evil. Amen. But we live in a day and hour where they dress it up, make it look good. But how many knows? Oh, let's go on. Satan will dress it up, make it look like it's not that bad. But if it goes against your standards, if it goes against the Word of God, how many knows we need to get rid of it? A stay from all appearance of evil. Don't even give it a place. We should be longing for spiritual things, spiritual godly things, things that will build us up and encourage us, not things that tear us down or pull us apart. And how many knows tonight if God's leading your life, He can still part Red Seas. Exodus 13, verse 18, But God led the people about 
through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. Amen. We know that God led Israel out of Egypt's bondage. But we also know that God led them right to the banks of the Red Sea. And we also know that God hardened Pharaoh's heart and he sent Pharaoh's army right after the children of Israel and we find them at the banks of the Red Sea. Amen. God led them out of Egypt. God was leading them and directing them, but he brings them right to the banks of the Red Sea. And what happens? They start murmuring and complaining. God, why didn't you just let us die in Egypt? Let us go back to Egypt. Let us go back to the bondage that you brought us out of. How many knows when God leads our lives, amen, and we may be standing at the banks of the Red Sea, we need to know that if God led me to the Red Sea, amen, God is still able to part the waters and let me walk across on dry ground. Amen. Pharaoh's army came after them, but Pharaoh's army did not touch them. How many of those God sent a whirlwind and he couldn't, they couldn't get to him? And then God parted the Red Sea and the enemy that they thought was going to destroy them, God took, amen, the Red Sea that was there and killed their enemy. And the Red Sea looked like the obstacle. Huh? How many of those God can take our obstacles and turn them around? Amen. He took the Red Sea that stopped them. He took the Red Sea that looked like, amen, where they were going to be killed. He led them into the Red Sea. He led them across the Red Sea. And He allowed the enemy of their, amen, to come into that Red Sea and the waters came down on them. So the thing that looked like it was their end, God turned it around and used it to kill their enemy. And how many knows when God is leading your life, we will still have trouble? Just because God is leading our lives doesn't mean we're never going to have trouble again. How many knows we ought to think just the opposite? When God's leading your life, you got a devil that's behind you trying to pull you back. He's trying to disrupt your life. He's trying to rain havoc in your life. He's trying to do everything he can to pull you back. Because when he has you, how many knows he's not going to bother you? But when you make up your mind, I'm going to allow God to lead my life, how many knows the old slew-foot devil likes to stir up trouble? But aren't you glad tonight? I've quoted this scripture. I've used this scripture, and I hope you've got it marked in your Bible tonight, Psalms 46, verse 1, it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Just because God is leading our lives doesn't mean we will not have, we will not have troubles, but we will have troubles. But when we do have trouble... He said, I'll be your refuge. Amen. A place that we can run to in the time of our trouble. So many times when trouble comes, we want to get on Facebook. We want to text everybody. We want to blow up how bad our trouble is. Amen. When we need to learn to run to our refuge and know that God will give us the strength that we need to go through what we have to go through. Amen. If God is leading your life when trouble comes, amen, God will give you the strength you need to get through your trouble. Sister Poole said this this morning in Sunday school class. She went to her, her, her minister and asked that, that for prayer that God would what, deliver you from a problem. She said, I'm not going to pray God will deliver you through a problem, but I'm going to pray that God will bring you through the problem because if I don't pray that, it's going to come back on you later. So many times we want to pray, God, bring me around my trouble. God, bring me away from my trouble. We need to say, God, give me the strength to get through my trouble that I can use this, amen, trouble that I'm going through right now to be a testimony on how God made a way where there seemed to be no way. When I thought I couldn't go another step, amen, God gave me the strength to keep on stepping. Amen. He said, I'll be your refuge and strength and very present. How many knows God don't run when trouble comes? 
Amen. We all will have troubles. But we must know in the midst of my trouble, God's right there. He said, I'm very present. He's not at a distance. He hasn't left you, but he's very present. He's right there. Amen. Have you ever got your kids and just shook them in their face and just looked at them? I told you. No. I mean, not grab them by the face, but maybe just. How many of those God's like, man, I'm here. I'm here. I'm right with you. I'm very present. He wants to shake us and say, don't look at what's going on around you. Don't look at how big your trouble is. I'm right here. I'm with you. Amen. He said, I'll be very present. Amen. Right there with you. God, don't run when trouble comes. How many knows when God leads our lives, death will still come to us. And we'll all face tragedies of loved ones that pass away. Just because we come to God don't mean our loved ones are going to live forever. We all are going to have to face times of death and loss. But I like what Matthew chapter four verse Matthew chapter five verse four says. It says, "Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted." Just because God is leading our lives doesn't mean people we love or friends or co-workers or people that we come in contact with will not pass away. Bad things will happen. But we must remember when things happen that may catch us off guard or may catch us unexpectedly, amen, that God is still in control. And if we will mourn and we will cry out to God, God will give us the strength we need, amen, to deal with the tragedy and the loss that may have caught us off guard. Amen. When death comes to our lives, we must learn to run to God. And we must mourn. Let it out. Let it out. If you get upset, get upset. Don't try to hold it in. I've said this so many times at funerals. Don't bottle it up. Don't get mad at God. Just let it out. He already knows what you're thinking anyway. So if you don't understand why, it's all right to say, God, why? I don't understand. He already knows you're thinking that. Amen? But anyway, just because God leads our life doesn't mean that we have to, that life stops and Things around us are perfect. Amen? And we can know that tonight, when God's leading our lives, that He will supply all of our needs. Philippians 4, verse 19. I feel like I'm saying the same things over and over and over. But we must know tonight that God's going to supply all needs tonight. God don't lead you to a place and say, okay, you're on your own, son. You're on your own, daughter. No. He's with us every step that we take. And if God's leading your life, He's going to supply every need that you have. Philippians 4, verse 19, But my God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So many times we think God is going to supply our needs by what we have. How many knows God don't need what you have? God is a supernatural God. When it may look like I don't have anything left, amen, God owns it all, and God is able to send a check in the mail. God's able to open a door that looks like it may never be open. Amen, God don't need our abilities. He just needs us to trust Him. Amen. If God is leading your life, He's going to take care of you. How many knows He's not a deadbeat father? He provides, He takes care of His children. He's going to supply every financial need. He's going to supply every emotional need. He's going to supply every spiritual need that you have. There's not a need that you have that God's not able to supply. And guess what? Just because He don't do it on your time don't mean He can't do it. Huh? We want it right now. Come on, God. Do it now. God's saying, I got you. Just hold on. Amen. And then God don't answer right now. We start, well, maybe he can't do it. Or maybe he's not going to do it. We let doubt and fear. Remember who's ruling our heart? Huh? If Christ is ruling our heart, the peace of God is on our throne of our heart. We shouldn't allow those things to get in there. But they do. But we need to know tonight that God can supply all of our needs. Amen. When he leads, he can still make a way where there seems to be no way. How many believe that? He's still a way maker. He's still a miracle worker. We sing that song, but do we believe it? 
Amen. He's still a miracle worker tonight. I like Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Amen. Who works in us? Who lives in us? The peace of God. Christ dwells and lives in our hearts. And through Him, amen, He can do exceedingly, abundantly more than you can even imagine and think. Amen. God can still make a way where there seems to be no way. But so many times we put God in our human box. How many knows God's not a human? He's supernatural. Amen. And God can do supernatural things. When it may look like in our human box, it cannot happen. But we need to know that God can do exceedingly, abundantly, more than I can even imagine and think. When I'm trying to figure out how God's going to do it, God's already got a way made. If God's leading your life, you need to know tonight, God can do more than you can even imagine and think. And He can still make a way. Amen? When the doctors don't know what to do, how many knows God still can do something? As long as there's breath, there's still hope. Amen? Hallelujah. How many believes that tonight? If you're faced what looks like to be an impossible situation, know that you serve a God of all possibilities. Amen? That has no limits. He never comes to a place and says, Oh, I don't know what to do. Amen? But God always knows exactly what to do and when to do it. Amen? And when He leads, remember... When we are weak, He is strong. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, He said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my firmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Amen. Let us never forget, amen, there will be times when God leads our lives that we may get weak and we may get weary. But let us also remember that during our times of weakness, He is still strong. And His strength is made perfect in my weakness. Amen. When I think I can do it, amen, I I try to get some of the glory. But when I get to the place where I know I'm done, I can't do no more, I'm out. Amen. God shows up and God shows us His strength, His power, and His ability. Amen. That He gets the glory. Amen? His strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. Amen? So if God's leading your life tonight and you may feel weak and you may feel weary, you need to know tonight God's strength is going to be made perfect in your weakness. Amen? Don't quit. Brother Roy said it this morning. There ain't no quitting on this side, right? We ought to be not talking about quitting. That should be in our vocabulary. I mean, I know we get tired and I know we get weary and we just want to sit down. But when you sit down, don't quit. Amen. And how many knows tonight when he leads our lives, all things work together for our good. There I go again. Sound like a broken record. Somebody needs to get it in your, out of here and get it down in your heart. Romans eight twenty eight. You probably already got it highlighted, got it marked. If you don't mark it, it says, we know. And we know, we need to know that we know that we know that we know that we know all things work together for good to them that love God. Them that are letting God lead and direct their lives. That's us, right? To them who are called according to His purpose. God has called us all out of darkness into the light. God has called us all out from under our under sin's bondage into His marvelous light. So know that you know you are called by God and you need to know that you know everything that's going on in your life. Amen. God is going to use it for your good. I've said this before and I'll say it again. God can take our tragedies and make them testimonies. If God is leading our lives, everything that happens don't happen by accident. God has a plan and a purpose for everything that happens. Amen? But we need to know that God's going to work it out for my good. I may not know how. I may not know when. But I know that I know that I know that God's going to work it out. Amen? 
Don't let doubt and unbelief kick Jesus off the throne of your heart. You need to know that you know he's the peace of God and he's ruling and reigning on my heart and he's going to work everything out for my good. How many knows tonight he will lead us right to the very end of life? Amen? You don't get saved and God starts leading you along and he says, okay, here you go. Like the kid on the bike, you know, when they take the training wheels off. He doesn't say, I'll take the training wheels off and you go on your own. How many knows he's going to lead our lives all the way unto the next? Amen. And like Psalms 23, verse 4, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no we- evil. Not weevil, I'm making up words up here. <laughs> I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Amen. When our time comes to an end, as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, how many knows we don't have to be afraid? We don't have to be scared of death. I know we're not going to line up and say, God, take me. I'm ready to go right now. Come on, God. We're not lined up saying, come on. But we don't have to be afraid to die. We can lay our head on our pillow and know that if I die in my sleep, I know where I'm going. If I pull out of this parking lot and I get hit and have a car accident, I know where I'm going. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I know God's going to be with me. God will lead us through every trial, every test that comes into our lives, and God will lead us as we walk to, amen, wherever we walk and we take our last breath. And as we transfer from this life into the next, how many knows He's going to lead you on over? Amen. In closing tonight, as they return to the music, let's stand. God's ultimate goal and God's ultimate plan is to lead our lives all the way to heaven. God wants you to make heaven your home. Amen. God wants each and every one of you to make heaven your home. And Satan wants to do everything he can to mess it up. He wants to bring trouble. He wants to bring hurt. He wants to bring heartache. He wants to do all kinds of stuff to try to stop us from getting there. How many knows we have to purpose in our hearts, I'm going to let God lead my life. Because if we try to get to heaven on our own merits and our own good works and our own knowledge that we think we have, how many knows we may not make it? And we will not make it without Christ. Amen. But we need to know tonight, God wants to lead us to the promised land. He wants to lead us to that place that He has prepared for us. John 14, 2 and verse 3, you all know it. It says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. So that means if He's prepared a place for you, He wants you to make it to the other side. Amen. It says, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. He wants to lead each and every one of us home. As I said this morning, I hope you purposed in your heart one day that you're going to make heaven your home. And the only way that's going to happen is God is leading your life. If you got the control of the reins of your heart, you got control of your life, you need to let go and let God. Tonight, as we bow our heads and close our eyes, I ask you the question Who's got control of your life? Who's got control of your heart? Who's leading your life? If God is not leading your life tonight, I invite you to this altar and you can say, God, help me. God, begin to lead my life. Forgive me for trying to control it myself. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin and lead me and direct me. Or maybe you're here tonight, you're trying to serve God, and you've allowed some stuff to get in the way. And that stuff has caused you to have doubt, fear, and unbelief. And your faith for the Lord has been weak and weary. Tonight, the altars are open where you can come and find strength at the foot of the cross. Tonight, maybe you're weary and you're tired and you just need His strength to be made perfect in your weakness. If you'll make a step of faith and come to this altar, don't be embarrassed, don't be ashamed, and say, God, lead my life. Give me the strength I need to make it to the other side. If that's you tonight, join me at this altar.
If you'd like to pray in your seat, the altars are open. Everybody will. Come and say, God, lead my life. Lead me to the other side. Will I 
trying to go around your problems and go through them tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not going to re-preach. I hope tonight the Word of God is challenged. Let the Lord lead your life. <laughs> Quit trying to hold on and just let Him lead you. Amen. Remember Tuesday night, guys, a, a men's meeting, men's fellowship, Wednesday night Bible study. Amen. So remember those things. And let's bow our heads and be dismissed tonight. Brother Jay, will you dismiss us tonight?